provides uh, support to the area. But uh, again, this is a painful condition often, and people who have this condition uh, injure their spines much more readily than people who don't have this condition. So it's the wearing out of the cartilage, and this is often a uh, result, um, a long-term result of spinal injury. That a person injures their back, they have a per perfectly normal spine, they have the pain and the spasm that goes on for weeks to months. It causes a continued grinding of the, the spinal joints. The cartilage wears out and it wears away and then you got permanent arthritis. Here's an x-ray uh, showing the lower back. If you follow the outline of the uh, arrow, this is the front of the vertebrae in the low back. This is the L4, the fourth vertebrae. There's the fifth vertebrae right here. And between the fourth and fifth lumbar vertebra, low back vertebra, you can see how this kind of white material, this white line, and above here there's another white line. That's the bottom of one vertebra and the top of, the an of another. And the in between is the disc space. Now the disc is supposed to be thick so that there's enough padding between the bones. But you can see if you look at the one below it, it's a lot thinner. This white line compared to this white line, so this is the top of the tailbone. This is the disc between the L5 and the, s and the, the tailbone or the sacrum, and that disc is starting to wear out. And we're going to show you the outline of these structures. And you compare the, the disc one here and the disc below it and see how the height is, is much different. So th that, that disc would result in uh, more pressure put on the spinal joints behind it, and there'd be arthritis in these joints back in here. So how do you how do you overcome these kind of problems? How do you ensure that if you if you do hurt your back, uh, injure your spine? How do you overcome problems so that you don't get long term pain, long term arthritis, and uh, continued injury to your spine? What you have to do is you got to reduce the swelling, you got to reduce the inflammation that's in your spine because inflammation promotes scar tissue and and the adhesions that lock the spine up and, and lock the joints up and muscles up. You want to relieve pain, obviously, because no one likes to be in pain. You need to restore joint mobility and flexibility as soon as possible. You cannot leave injured joints to be stuck and grinding for weeks and months uh, uh, on end after an injury. So you have to do treatments that promote flexibility and motion to the joints that are injured. Uh, you need to reduce muscle spasm because the spasm also keeps the joints uh, grinding, grinding into each other to wear out that cartilage. You, get, you have to strengthen muscle tissues. Uh, you can't l leave, even when the pain is gone, often after an injury, the pain is gone, but the, the tissue, the muscles are still weak from the injury and need to be rehabilitated. So to prevent uh, future problems, you have to rehabilitate the uh, muscles through uh, special uh, exercises that, that strengthen balance and muscle coordination. That's the next step. We need to restore muscle balance and coordination. Uh, exercises such that uh, involve, uh, like even just standing on one foot, uh, increases the uh, the muscles that that control balance in your spine. That increases their activity and strengthens them. So just doing exercises that, that involve standing on one foot can help uh, strengthen core uh, muscles around the spine. And that's what we we're trying to do. We're trying to re reduce the risk of re-injury, future pain, and arthritis by doing all the things above it. You know, you got to you got to restore this, restore the mobility. You have to strengthen the tissues that got injured. You got to reduce the swelling and pain and spasm to prom to promote uh, proper healing of these injured tissues. You don't want to uh, neglect the proper treatment rehabilitation because the uh, back problems uh, can go on for months, years, and even the rest of your life that aren't properly treated. So the prescription for treatment uh, at this clinic um, are treatments that are designed to reduce swelling and pain, such as heat or ice and physical therapy uh, modalities. Um, ad uh, spinal adjustments to a specific uh, stretching and movement and mobility of uh, special uh, 
joints in the spine that reduce pain and swelling uh, and reduce uh, the adhesions. We have these scars, the scar tissue trying to form uh, bridges between the vertebra that aren't supposed to be there and they're interfering with proper healing and, and proper uh, mobility. Um, also, there th there's been research that shows that, shows that the spinal adjustments actually help improve uh, the muscle coordination too. Muscles can function better when the spinal joints are moving properly. There's no uh, uh, abnormal reflexes that are holding the vertebrae in, uh, and muscles in a spastic position. They also improve nerve function. Massage, uh, massage is also important when it comes to rehabilitating an injured spine because massage relaxes t tight muscles, improves the circulation of blood in those muscles. Tight muscles have poor uh, circulation, that the blood cannot get into the muscle and the uh, toxins can't get out as well when the muscle's in a con constantly tight and contracted position. That's part of the reason why uh, tight muscles hurt is because of this poor blood circulation. And then finally, exercise to strengthen the core muscles around the spine and also to do some uh, exercise that inv uh, involve cardiac uh, strengthening such as uh, aerobic exercises to improve uh, heart strength, lung strength, diaphragm and uh, also balancing coordinating muscle uh, exercises to help reduce uh, uh, prolonged and uh, re-injury.